Okay, gents, let's focus on another big storyline over the summer months. The U.S. men's national team. What a summer it was for Greg Bohart's side. They won the Gold Cup, won the Nations League. They have now broken into the top 10 of the FIFA World Rankings for the first time since 2006, which is an incredible achievement. And it just underlines, I think, the squad depth that now the U.S. has all of a sudden because they have two squads that have really showed up this summer and Andy, I know you've been watching them closely in both competitions. What's your overall feeling about where the U.S. is at right now? Because I don't think any of us were this positive about the U.S. men's national team going into the summer, right? They've, they've surprised all of us. Yeah, I, I guess you have to ask how much should winning two games with the A team and then winning a handful of games with the B team, a lot of players that you're not expecting to see at the World Cup or let alone even World Cup qualifying coming up here in, in the next month, how excited should we get about that? And and the word that you used that I think was perfect was depth. It, it proved that the, the U.S. men's national team has a player pool now that is where it needs to be to withstand an injury or a suspension to a star player or a couple of star players at the same time when games of consequence are being played. I'm talking about World Cup qualifying. So if Christian Pulisic goes down with an injury, if Weston McKinney or Tyler Adams goes down with an injury, we now have an entire tournament um, uh, of evidence of multiple players that can come in and fill in those spots for a game or two and can get the U.S. men's national team over the line and into the World Cup. So it, it was really heartening to see the way that some of the young players you know, took that next step in their careers from the club level, and a number of them have already parlayed that into transfers over to Europe. Jean-Luc Abusio, Sam Vines, and I know I'm forgetting one other that was on that Gold Cup team as well, uh, but they're making moves and they're really progressing their careers quickly. So uh, I'm 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 cautiously optimistic. I want to even say I'm hopeful about what's to come over the next year with the U.S. men's national team. But you know, like 2017 was still it wasn't that long ago, so it still feels pretty fresh, still pretty raw. But Nick, yeah. Nick, I mean, what does it mean for this group of players to be in the top 10 national teams in the world? Whatever you think about the FIFA World Rankings, this does have huge implications. There's some suggestions when you look at the numbers, uh, a lot of young American players now, it will be easier for them to come to England, for example, and get a work permit um, in the championship or the Premier League just because the US are in the top 10 compared to being 11th to 20th, which is crazy. But that's the way these things work and, and the way that certain countries rule work permits for, uh, for football players. So what do you think about that? I mean, bigger picture, maybe the respect levels for American soccer. We've seen it growing in Europe with so many players coming from MLS and the likes of Pulisic and Reina ripping it up. I mean, this is, I don't want to say the heyday for American soccer, but this is a little bit uncharted territory, right? It's close. It, it, it's very, very close to that. They just won a tournament um, that for a long time was one they really, really cared about with house money, playing with house money. We looked at the roster when it came out and we said, all right, they're just going to look at some guys and they they may not even make the final. They may not, you know, they may have trouble making it to the semifinal and they won the thing. So I'm just so impressed. I, I think that credit maybe to the Federation t for um, for not freaking out at some points because they didn't play anybody for a while. Yes. Um, they let Burhalter make mistakes. A lot of people are now writing yes. these kind of revisionist history stories about how this was the plan all along. I'm like, right. Mm. Tyler Adams has a right back. Like Burhalter is a very good coach, a terrific tactical coach who needed to figure out what he does. Uh, it's not a worry for me. I think there will be a learning process though as he melds these two groups together in qualifiers. Um, and the only big worry is, was this a long con from Mexico? <laughs> because I, I frankly can't believe that that was the best that they could put out on that day. I, I know there are players they didn't use, but for me, it's still going to come down to the USA and Mexico. And if Jamaica gels, look out, they're the wild card here. But yes, the transfers are going to be great. The moves are going to be great. The attraction is great. And I can't wait to see more Pulisic, to be honest with you. I know that's crazy, but is he the transcendent star? Yeah. Let me jump in real quick and say what a difference it makes to have an adult in charge of a team <laughs> and, a, and an organization. And, and for any fans out there of a club or a national team or whatever, just, just ask yourself and think to yourself, honestly, say, is an adult in charge at my club or my national team? 
And you might be surprised at the answer. And it might make you rethink how you kind of view your club and what the expectation should be uh, coming from a season and a half of, of following very closely a club who did not have an adult in charge and now appears to have an adult in charge. The same with us men's national team for a time. It's just, it's great to have an adult in charge of other adults uh, when, when, when there's things on the line. That's all I'm saying. That's very true. And we can attest to that because Gene, our producer is, is an adult <laughs> and he looks up for us. And this is the only reason we make sense from week to week. So he does a great job. So we all know how that is. Um, but I, I'm just going to say this right now. What U.S. players are we looking at to have a big season in Europe? Because you mentioned Pulisic there, Nick. Yeah, I feel like this is a big season for him at Chelsea with Lukaku coming in. One of those forward spots now has been taken away. Still, like, the jury's out, even in some of those big games last season at the end of the campaign. Yes, he, he showed up in the Champions League, but others were preferred in those attacking midfield roles. Aside from him, I'm looking at Josh Sargent signing for Norwich City. That's huge for the U.S. I still don't think they have a prolific striker up there, even though a few players did make a step forward this summer. And, you know, Brendan Aronson, obviously, at RB Salzburg coming through as well. And a few other players like Busio coming to uh, Serie A and Venezia. I, I think there's some really interesting moves. But, Nick, I'm intrigued to see who you want to see step up into that next level uh, of U.S. talent, like you said, because Pulisic's right on the cusp, right? Yeah, I wonder if it's being cute to go with the big names. Like usually yeah. you get cute and you find you, you dig deep and you find this guy who might I am looking at Pulisic at Chelsea. I'm looking at Weston McKenney with a new boss and uh you may remember this is the first time that they are not defending Scudetto winners in a decade. Um Tyler Adams, what's his role going to be? Uh, at at RB Leipzig. Well, we, so, we know that one. Jesse Marsh has said he's going to play almost exclusively the six right. this year, which is so, great for the national team. It is great for the national team, but how how does the adjustment happen with that talent around him? Yeah. I think he'll get a longer leash, and I'm excited about that. I think he's an exceptional player, but you look at the guys who've left there over the next few years. So those are the, the big three names. I know what I'm getting in. And goalkeeper is probably the wild card. But I know what I'm getting in John Brooks. I still know he's, you know, the number one guy. Um, are my stars transcendent? That's the question. Yeah. That's, That's the most question. important time as well. You're, you're yeah. asking your best players to be in good form going into the most important, what, 14 games that they will play in a four-year period. I, I, don't, I don't think that's being too unreasonable. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree with you. And that sets us up nicely because World Cup qualifying, as well as they've done this summer, it was all about getting the squad together for World Cup qualifying, which starts in September. Got the schedule in front of me here. I mean, El Salvador away in September, followed up by Canada at home three days later, then Honduras away. In October, Jamaica at home, Panama away, Costa Rica at home, and then in November, Mexico at home and Jamaica away. So that couple of month period there is basically Bill Halter's job did he do a good one on the line for the last few years because that is what it all boils down to it's great to be in the top 10 great to win the gold cup and the nation's league of course but as we head into world cup qualifying this is go time now and there's a sense around the U.S. national team and Pulisic and McKenney and Adams this is the time to step up we may not get another chance all as one group because they know what happened last time and there's going to be some pressure on them, I think, especially in some of those home games there. And we saw, as Nick said, Jamaica have been showing up and have some really good talent in their squad in particular. So uh, World Cup qualifying is going to be interesting. Any final thoughts on, on on that period for the U.S. men's national team and maybe how they can approach it? Open the floor to you guys. Yeah, I, I like that Nick mentioned John Brooks. Feel good about him at center back. I'm still yeah. waiting to find out who's going to play alongside John Brooks. It's a, it's it's the only question I have about if everybody is healthy, who starts a do or die World Cup qualifier tomorrow for the US men's national team. It could be eight different guys at, at this point and 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 I don't know that any one of them is any better or any worse than any of the rest. Walker Zimmerman looked like he had an opportunity, I think, to stake his claim to that going into the Gold Cup. He got injured not long into the tournament. Miles Robinson looked good from that point on in the tournament, but I, I think of him more as uh, the style of defender that he is. He would be a great player to take to a World Cup, to have on a 23-man roster for late-game situations where it is all, uh, all hands on deck, 
emergency defending going on, trying to hold on to a lead. He is so instinctive in the way that he defends and scrambles back, and the plays that he makes are incredible. He has lapses in other parts of the game, especially on the ball and, and in possession, and we know how much Burhalter prioritizes that. So I just, I, I'm that's the the one player I guess to go back to a previous question that if somebody is to step up this season, I'm still waiting for that position. I think I've been saying that for I don't know six months that we've been doing these videos. I'm just waiting for someone in that that one position. Then I feel, then I can say I think we're going to the World Cup. And Burhalter's made uh, a really good point when we heard them talk in the gold cup with the three games in a window that there's going to have to be more rotation. Right. So when you start to worry about, well, is it Reggie Cannon or Anthony Robinson and where is Dest playing? Yep. Well, they're all playing, you know, they're all playing for a certain mm -hmm. period of time. I guess my big question is the resounding question with me is I look at guys like, and I hate that they're going to be MLS guys coming out of my mouth because they're <laughs> Europeans as well. But I look at Zardes, Areola, mm -hmm. and let get, uh, sorry, <laughs> let get. Oh my God, uh, special AJ. I, I I look at them and I think to myself, are we looking at guys that that Burhalter sees as mainstays or as guys who can? I love Giassi Zardes in the Wando role. I don't love him starting against Mexico. I love Giassi Zardes starting at El Salvador as a Concacaf killer. Yeah. I don't love him so. Those sort of, I don't even want to call them nuances because they're big questions, but th that's where I worry. And I will add one name to the question. What is Chris Richards doing this year? Yep. Um, yep. Because that's, that's the big one. He's getting a little older and mm -hmm. he's in a position where he could be that guy. That's very true. That's very true. And focusing now on the U.S. women's national team, Nick, I know you mentioned earlier you were with the Olympics team this summer. Obviously, they got a bronze medal. They were the favorites to win it all in Tokyo. Didn't quite work. The veteran team just looked a little bit... I don't know, just out of sorts. I think Megan Rapinoe said it said it best that they didn't really have that juice wasn't going from the start of the tournament. So what did you make of that? They won a medal. They rallied late in the tournament. But is this kind of the start of a new era, you think, for the U.S. women's national team with Carly Lloyd, Rapinoe, and so many others maybe right at the end of their time with the USA? Yeah, I'm trying to remember who wrote it. I think it might have been uh, Caitlin Murray wrote something along the lines of that we have these victory tours with the U.S. team. And we have these uh, these long runs where we're celebrating the legends and they all have to play because mm -hmm. that's the fans have played to see. And so they haven't rolled out the young kids. And I don't even think it's necessarily about young kids because how often have we talked about whether the U.S. women's national team could roll out a B team and still do well at a tournament? So, I mean, I think what happened, this is really oversimplifying because uh, it's not her fault, but Megan Rapino had a not great tournament. And maybe that's because she's a little bit older. Um, and, and that was that. She wasn't the X factor. And that doesn't mean she's not good enough to play or start or shouldn't be in the picture moving forward. And it's hard because as her profile has risen as an icon in the world, period, point blank, no, you know, no, we're talking about as a human being profile. Um, she's 36 years old. And so there, there wasn't a lot there. I think Alex Morgan is still finding her groove. I don't think she's done at all. Um, but again, how many of these players are above 30? Tobin Heath is above 30. Again, doesn't mean they're done, but who's sliding in there? Because their best players were Rose Lavelle and Julie Ertz and still Becky Sauerbrunn. Yeah. Um, and then one more thing. When Alyssa Nair got hurt, um, nothing against A.D. French, who's a very good goalkeeper, but you could tell that that woman who had just stopped three penalties, one in, in the run of play, maybe was their security blanket a little bit. Definitely. So interesting times ahead for the U.S. women's national team to see how they rebuild re after the bronze medal in Tokyo. And for the U.S. men's national team, what a summer. Two trophies in the cabinet, top 10 of the FIFA rankings, and now they're heading into World Cup qualifying in September, where they are pretty much the favorites, I think, to advance, uh, maybe even above Mexico now, which I did not think we'd be saying a few <laughs> months ago, gents. But here we are. No one did. <laughs> That's where we're at. And at Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com, we'll keep you updated with all the latest news from around the US national teams. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe. Make sure you subscribe to watch highlights all season long and join us at the weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern on NBCSN for Premier League mornings and subscribe, sign up for Peacock Premium where you'll have access to 175 exclusive live games all season long.